you know, I found this guy to be a very good retailer, a very straight up honest guy, hardworking. If you see most, most successful people, they have that history. They have that history of working from the ground up and developing themselves into something. And, and, and Sagai's, that's, that's Sagai's story. Coming from Africa with very little, starting working for people, then opening his own business and having it to be a very successful business. Um, and mean among, but while doing that, holding on and keeping his integrity and, and his honesty, uh, which is admirable and commendable. And that's, you know, it's just not enough of that in, the, in this business nowadays. My background was with Green Hill. Originally, I was one half of the company Green Hill, my partner Damon Green. And uh, we uh, were the wholesale, or actually the agent, worked closely with the wholesaler for Rockware and Aniche. Uh, I want to say approximately maybe 2001, 2002, uh, Sagai King introduced himself to us. Uh, explained that he had a store in the lower level of Eaton Center at this time. It was the, actually, I remember it was the cl store close right to the um, subway. To me, originally stood out as one of the best locations in the mall because it's the highest traffic location. From his background in hand and how he uh, approached us at the time, we were fairly confident that we could do uh, some good business with him, which, which we ended up doing. My name is Rich Clark. Uh, I work at Group Imperial and we represent all of the Echo family of brands. Zoo York, which you see behind me, is a very prominent skate brand. And uh, we also do a couple other MMA brands, Dithrone Royalty and Silverstar. Prior to joining the team at Group Imperial, I know Sagai from School of Hard Knocks, uh, which was my brand, which was a brand that was, we started in New York in 1992. And I probably would have met Sagai the early part of the decade, the late part of the 90s, when he started Studio 47. And initially it was just uh, a cart in the mall and he grew that to something much bigger, but we've been doing business together for a long time. He was in a mall, which is the Eaton Center, which is the biggest mall in Ontario, the highest traffic, probably the, not quite the highest rent, but at that time it would have been the uh, highest rental units in that mall, uh, Cadillac Fairview Mall. My name is Lloyd Demetrius. I'm owner and operator for uh, Jordan's Fashion for the past 25 years. I've uh, known Sagai for a number of years, at least 10, 15 years. Uh, I met him when he first started out. Young, ambitious, enthusiastic young man, and I decided I'd work with him and help him to build a business when we first started out, we started selling the hip-hop lines. We brought Carl Kanai into the country for the first time. Uh, we also brought Kanai here to meet and greet most of the customers. Tagai was one of the uh, uh, retailers that uh, the owner met because he was one of our uh, bigger clients. My name is Susan. Um, I've been friends with the guys. I worked with him for uh, at International Cool of the Years for approximately f just over five years. He is the most loving, a generous person I've ever met. He's a hard worker. Wherever he's at, he cares about what he, what he does. My name is Victor Cruz and I own my own company called Victor Cruz Sales. I uh, met the guy um, about 10 to 12 years ago when he had a, a, a store in downtown core of Toronto and uh, a couple of years later he opened up, moved into a bigger location where he expanded his, uh, his uh, uh, retail um, uh, operation. I was distributing at that time academics and um, he was um, one of my probably one of my or the best uh, uh, independent retailer in, uh, in this territory which is Ontario which is the largest uh, territory in Canada. My name is Adam Slater from Adam Slater Sales Agency here in Toronto, Canada. In the early 90s we started carrying urban hip-hop uh, clothing uh, brands maybe 93, 94, that I first met Sigai. And uh, he called up one day and he said he wanted to come in and uh, book Fat Farm. So the next day he showed up and 
we started working the, the, uh, the line. By the end of the year, we'd most probably done uh, like $150,000 worth of, uh, of uh, bookings and shipping with uh, Sergei, which put him in maybe like the, uh, the top 10 percentile of, uh, of my independent retailers. He expanded, um, he brought in uh, more brands, uh, and also uh, he's become to be, at that time, he became as a destination place for the youth of uh, uh, Toronto to uh, look for certain brands. I did get to know Sagai. It was actually back in the day when I would say all the hip hop clothes and everything was happening. It was maybe around the early 2000s. And at that time, again, I was into the street culture, more the urban wear. And of course, as a young person, you're always looking for what's hip, what's hot. And of course, you want to have that person, that go-to person who would be the focal of uh, where you're getting all your clothes from. He was the place to go to if you wanted to have like a good selection um, and, and a good variety of brands and, and styles and colors and all sizes available. So guys' orders, you know, started out you know conservative and then they you know went as high as you know 60,000 and above the traffic and the business that he generated out of that store was quite impressive we were always amazed even our, our uh, counterparts in Montreal were always amazed that the, the volume that, that he could push through in with such a small store Jay and Tagai have known each other for about 10 years, uh, where Tagai has had a great business relationship with Jay. Uh, he spent about $5 million at the store, and in these 10 years, Tagai has proven that he's a very hard worker, and he has a great personality and always brightens up our days when he comes into the office. In the past 10 to 12 years, I'd say uh, averaging 100 to uh, 200,000 at, at wholesale uh, um, shippings. So that would work out to be over millions, two million dollars uh, in the past 10 years. Not only did he grow his business to a multi-million dollar business, but he grew multiple stores in the mall as well. And what was interesting about it was that all these big players would come into the market, into that mall specifically, and they would last a year or two and then they would fold because they couldn't, they didn't understand the mall or understand the market. But Sagai managed to stay there for over a decade, which you know, which is a, a testament itself to his work ethic and his understanding of the market and just his business strategy because he stayed where, you know, companies that were 20 and $30 million companies, they couldn't stay in that market. And he managed to build a business that I think grew to, you know, 10 to 15 million in sales. I see a lot of potential in Tagai. I see that he has the ability and he's got a good sense about fashion. He understands the hip-hop market, he understands the streetwear market, the mentality of the customer. With a person who wasn't into IT, wasn't into computers or whatnot, still took the time to develop relationships with each and every one of his customers to the point where if he walks down the street, you're going to have about five to ten guys who say what's up to him because of the fact that he's developed that relationship. He's understood where a lot of 